let's take a look at what an ADSR envelope generator does and how it impacts audio tones, for example in an audio synthesizer. As stated on Wikipedia, an envelope describes how sound changes over time, and an ADSR envelope controls how the volume of a sound changes over time. We have control over attack, decay, sustain, and release parameters. What that means is, if you have a key on a keyboard where you press it to make a sound, the attack represents how long it takes from the initial key press for the volume to get to a maximum level. Decay represents the amount of time it takes to then have the volume reduced to some level that you control, and that level will be the volume that the tone is sounding as long as you're holding this key. Then the release parameter controls how long it takes when you let the key go until the sound fully dies out. So when you have zero release time, if you let go of the key, the tone stops immediately. If you have a longer release time, when you release the key, it will take a while to gradually reduce in volume to zero. By changing all of these parameters, you can change the characteristic of the sound. In order to explore this, I came up with this Teensy 3.6 demo. There will be an audio shield docked with the Teensy. So if this is my Teensy 3.6, I have this audio shield here so I can generate sounds inside the Teensy and have line out audio right here to go to an amplifier. I have four push buttons here. Each one's going to generate a different audio signal. I'm going to have three different pitch sawtooth waveforms for three different audio notes. And the fourth one is just going to be a copy of the first one, but without any processing. It's just going to be the straight tone on and off for comparison. In order to control those ADSR, attack, decay, sustain, release parameters, I have four potentiometers going to analog inputs. I took an OLED display with I squared C, and I'm actually going to draw what the envelope looks like as I change the pot knobs. Then I can press the buttons and see what's going on. The audio shield that's connected also has I squared C, and that audio shield has pull-up resistors for the serial clock and data, which are required. I don't need to add any on the breadboard because they exist elsewhere on this bus. And to power everything, I'm taking ground and 3.3 volts from Teensy into the breadboard. So the buttons have a ground, the potentiometers have 3.3 and ground, and the OLED's being powered from 3.3. The sketch in the Teensy implements this block diagram. So I have three different waveforms. I'm setting them as sawtooth. And in the sketch, I'll set the frequency of each waveform to be a different pitch. As in other projects, since I'm using the audio shield for this one, I bring in this control module so I can talk to the shield electronics. So here's the audio left and right line out and ground in the middle. The mixer will allow me to take up to four audio sources, and then I can control their volumes individually if I want, and the audio goes out to the audio board. So the three audio tones each go to an envelope generator where I can control those ADSR parameters, and those go to mixer inputs. But as a reference to see what the sound is like without this envelope, I also take an extra copy of one of the waveforms and put that straight to the mixer. So when I use the four push buttons, I can turn on any of these four channels. In this envelope filter, they have the usual A, D, S, R parameters, but they have a couple of extra things here. But I'm not going to use those. I'm just going to keep it simple. A, D, S, R. So I can set the delay time of those parameters or the level of the sustain, which is the volume level of the tone while we hold the key down. And the functions note on and note off are used to indicate it's time to start this envelope because we've pressed a key or we've released the key so it's time to implement the release delay. So what this means is, these three waveforms are continuously generating a tone. If I turn up the gain on this first mixer input, I'm just going to get that constant tone out. For these others going through the envelope, the tone is always coming to the input of the envelope, but it's only going to come out when we start this note on and fade the volume in, fade it down, 
hold it, and then fade it out. So just for fun, the three waveform tones that I chose were based on playing around with this little online thing I found, where you can choose a chord name, it'll play that chord, and it will show you here what keys on a keyboard would create that chord. And I kind of liked this F sus too. So I decided to go with those notes. Then if I come over to Wikipedia, and there's this sideways piano keyboard looking chart, and then this chart here tells me what frequency those notes are and what the notes are called. So let's play around with these controls and observe the envelope generating waveform and see how it impacts those tones in various settings. Here's the overall setup. This is just a Teensy breakout board I made a couple of months ago. So it has Teensy 3.6 plugged in, and then the audio shield here for the I2S audio interface. And we can really ignore everything else that's going on. And the line out goes to this little amplifier right here to hear the sounds. Then I have two sets of jumpers here going to Teensy. These are for analog inputs going to these potentiometers. And here's for digital inputs going to these four switches right here. I currently have the potentiometer set for this certain ADSR waveform. So if I push this button right here, it will play the internal sawtooth generated tone starting and stopping as I push the button. These other three push buttons generate three separate frequencies, but they are all controlled by this ADSR envelope. So if I push this top left button, it will send out the same frequency as the first button we tried, and then the other two buttons are two different tones, and we can play around with the controls, change this envelope pattern, and see how that impacts it as well. So with this envelope, the audio gradually fades in with volume until it gets to the maximum, then it gradually fades down in volume a bit, and as long as I'm holding the button, it will sustain at a certain volume that I've set on the sustain pot, and when I let go of the button, it will gradually release down to zero volume instead of instantly. And we can also play simultaneous notes, Now let's take a look at the software side of things. So we want a mixer so that we can combine all these audio paths. And down in this synth section, that's where we can bring in these waveform generators. And in software, we get to configure what kind of waveform we are generating. And down in the effects, that's where we have the envelope filter. So when we have this set up the way we want, as usual, if we export, we can copy this header over to our sketch. All it really does is make sure we include all these different blocks and connect them up audio outputs to audio inputs with patch cords as drawn here. Over in the sketch, I won't cover everything fully because we've covered a lot of things over and over. I'm using Adafruit graphics libraries and OLED drivers. It's a 128 by 64 OLED, so we configure it as we normally would. This is basically what gets exported out of that audio GUI tool. These are the inputs for the four potentiometers and four push buttons. When we read in the ADSR parameters from those potentiometers, I'm going to store settings in these variables here. And if we look back at the settings we can control for the ADSR envelope, 
The timing can be up to 11880 milliseconds on these parameters, but I found that to be a little impractical, so I'm just defining a maximum of only 2000. And the frequencies for the three waveforms are defined right here, representing notes G, C, and F. In the setup, make sure the push buttons are inputs with pull-ups, initialize the OLED the way we normally do, and just experimentally, I found a gain of 0 0.2, which can be between 0 and 1 for min and max gain. 0 0.2 worked well for when I want simultaneous waveforms so they don't clip. Here I initialize the three waveforms as sawtooth, and for those three waveforms, I set up the ADSR parameters with some defaults, then we are into the main loop. So I check the push button debounce functions and see if any buttons have been pressed or released. When a button is pressed, so it has a falling edge going to ground, turn on the note on that envelope generator. So by triggering note on, we begin this attack phase. And as long as we keep that button down, we will sustain the note at this other volume level that we have set on the pot until we release the push button and then we fade out. So that would be here if the push button had a rising edge, meaning we released it so the internal pull-up is taking over, we turn the note off and start the release phase. And for the final push button, all we're doing is turning on the unaffected pure audio with a certain volume gain or turning it to zero to make it quiet. So that's how we can compare the raw audio against audio with an ADSR envelope, just to see the difference. At some point in the main loop, we want to actually read in the four pots, and then we use the map function to convert our analog reading 0 to 1023 into a useful parameter between 0 milliseconds and whatever maximum we want, which we set that to 2000 earlier. The sustain parameter is a floating number between 0 and 1.0, so we're not using integers, and we can't use the regular map function. So here's a floating map function to be able to scale 0 to 1023 over to 0 to 1.0, so it will give all the decimals in between. And I found this floating point math function on a forum. And at some point in the main loop, we also want to draw the ADSR envelope shape on our OLED, so we'll look at that function. And so now that we've read in the pots, we want to update those envelope settings for each of those frequencies. So we are adjusting those ADSR envelope parameters for each of those three waveforms based on the pots. The only routine left is drawing that ADSR waveform on the OLED. So looking at the Adafruit graphics library, I'm going to use the draw line function. I basically have to tell it x and y coordinates where I want to start, x and y coordinates where I want to end, and it will draw a line. And I just need to basically do that four times, and that will let me draw the attack line, the decay line, the sustain line, and the release line. So x and y coordinates 0, 0 are in the top left. Knowing that, and knowing we have 128 wide by 64 tall. These are the coordinates for starting and ending points of each line I draw. So for the attack line, attack is always going to start down in the bottom left of the drawing, and it's always going to end at maximum height. It's just a question of the pot setting for the delay time. Is it going to be zero or maximum? So down here in the bottom left, x is going to equal zero, and y is going to be 63, because with 64 pixels we go from 0 to 63, so that gets me down here, and if it's always going to end up here at what I call maximum top of the screen, I decided y is going to equal 20, let's say that's somewhere around here. Starting at 0 we come down to 20, and that's because I'm printing ADSR text up here, so my graphic portion, I'm just going to start down here at y equals 20. X is how far along do I need to actually go with this line, based on the pot setting. So what I'm doing here is mapping the setting I read in on the pot for the attack parameter, and that reading can be anything between 0 and 2000 in this example, but I need to map it over to a reading between 0 as well, and a quarter of the screen width. 
because there's four different sections here to map out, so I just divided the screen in four, and I'm basically trying to say, where does this line end up? It's either going to be zero with the pot zero, or if the pot is set to the maximum 2,000 milliseconds, it's going to be over here, which is a quarter way across the screen. Then I just draw that line from the start to the end coordinates. So we won't go through all the rest, but it's basically the same thing. This is really one continuous jagged line. So wherever this first line ends up, those x, y coordinates, those become the starting of the new line. And then we just have to do the same sort of calculation to see where it ends. And then that is the starting coordinate of the next line and so on until we're done. And that's the entire sketch. Now we know the basics of how this ADSR envelope works, and we can put it to good use as we expand upon these concepts and bring one larger project together at some point in the future. Be sure to subscribe if you'd like to stay tuned for any future projects like this. Click like if you thought this video was helpful. I'll see you in the next video.